Okay. Get those folks out so we can close the doors. Thank you. Okay, we're going to go back to our regular schedule. All the members are here. Thank you very much. The next order of business is approval of the journal of the meeting of Thursday, October 26, 2017. And the chair recognizes Councilman Greenlee. Thank you, Mr. President. I move that the journal of the meeting of Thursday, October 26, 2017 be approved. Second. Thank you. It's been moved to property second at the journal of the meeting of Thursday, October 26, 2017. Stand approved. All those in favor indicate by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, ayes have it. The journal is approved. Next order of business to request for leaves of absence, and the chair recognizes Councilman Heenan. Thank you, Mr. President. On behalf of the majority, there are no requests of leave of absence today. Thank you. Chair, thanks to the gentleman. And the chair recognizes Councilman O'Neill. Is this an excuse? Yeah, I thought so. Thank you. Mr. President, on behalf of the Republicans, there are no requests for leave of absence. Chair, thanks to the gentleman. Thank you. You want one way? Okay. Uh, this time I would like to dispense with the regular order of business and I would like to welcome and thank everyone who has witnessed our government in action. Uh, we really appreciate the fact that you've taken time out of your day to come down uh, today and be with us. Again, thank you so much. At this time, Chair recognizes Councilwoman Reynolds Brown, who will present a resolution recognizing the service of women veterans in the United States and the extraordinary contributions of the Women's Veterans Center. Would Anna Stormer and those accompanying her please join the Councilwoman at the podium? And joining the Councilwoman, we have Councilman Greenlee, Councilman Heenan, Councilwoman Blackwell, Councilwoman Gim, and Councilman Taubenberger. Very good. And Councilman Green. Good. And Councilman Squilla. Thank you, Mr. President. This is a thrill for us as it is a first when we are recognizing the service of women veterans in the United States of America and the extraordinary contributions of the Women's Veterans Center. Whereas women have been actively serving in the United States military since the Revolutionary War. For us history buffs, I'll repeat that. Women have been actively serving in the United States military since the Revolutionary War, oftentimes disguised as men so they could serve in combat roles. The Women's Armed Services Integration Act of 1948 allowed women to serve permanently in the military rather than only during times of war. And whereas in 1974, women were admitted to the United States Merchant Marine Academy in Kings Point, in 1976, women were first admitted to the remaining service academies, including U.S. Military Academy in West Point, U.S. Naval Academy at Annapolis, U.S. Coast Guard Academy in New London, and the U.S. Air Force Academy in Colorado Springs, and... Whereas the USS Acadia departed for the Persian Gulf in 1990, with both men and women aboard for the first time ever in wartime. More than 41,000 women were deployed in war zones between 1991 and 1992 during the Persian Gulf War and... Whereas in 1998, female fighter pilots flew combat missions for the first time ever. Captain Kathleen McGrath became the first woman to command a U.S. Navy warship in 2000. In 2004, Colonel Linda McTague became the first female commander of a fighter squadron in the U.S. Air Force. In 2011, women deployed on a submarine for the first time. And Whereas in 
Whereas Obama Administration Defense Secretary Leon Panetta announced in 2013 that the ban on women serving in combat would be lifted. In 2015, during the first year that women were permitted in, on ground, Captain Kristen Greist and First Lieutenant Shea Haver became the first two women to graduate from Army Ranger School, shifting the paradigm from if women could meet the standard to now that women have met the standard. And whereas the military, influenced by the performance of women on the front line since 9-11, and by these first women Ranger School graduates, is setting the stage for women to command young men outside the wire in infantry and armor platoons with the same risks and responsibilities as their male counterparts. Whereas, as they transition out of the military, women now make up 10% of the veteran population, Women veterans and their accomplishments in service often go unrecognized, even though the number of women in the military continues to grow. And women continue to break barriers during and after their military service. And? Whereas the transition from military life to civilian life can be difficult, more than four in 10 female post 9-11 veterans say their readjustment to civilian life after their military service was very or somewhat difficult. And whereas the Veterans Multi-Service Center created the Women's Veterans Center in 2014 to address the growing and unique needs of women veterans and their families through its mission of providing separate and communal space to heal, grow, and thrive. To date, the WVC has served over 650 women and their families, and... Whereas, the Women's Veterans Center <clears throat> is focused on creating community and strengthening one-on-one -on -one relationships through a variety of services, including assistance with immediate needs, meals, clothing, toiletry products, housing case management, benefits counseling, referrals to community partners, and a robust calendar of fellowship activities. And? Whereas, women of America's military, past and present, have served their nation in times of peace and war, at great personal sacrifice for both themselves and their families. Women have consistently answered the call without hesitation to defend our democracy and freedom, playing a significant role in developing the extraordinarily capable military that continues to protect the foundation of our great nation. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Council of the City of Philadelphia that we hereby honor and recognize the service of women veterans in the United States and the extraordinary contributions of the Women's Veteran Center. Further resolve that an engrossed copy of this resolution be presented to the Women's Veterans Center as evidence of the sincere sentiments of this legislative body. Let's celebrate the Women's Veterans Center and all women who sacrifice, step up, and stand up for the land that we serve. Thank you very much, Mr. President. And the chair recognizes Ms. Stormer for remarks. Thank you, Council President, and thank you to this wonderful um, committee of all the council members for presenting us. My name is Anna Stormer, and I have the honor and privilege of serving as the coordinator for the Women's Veterans Center. The VMC and the women of the Women's Veterans Center are truly grateful for the acknowledgement of our hard work and dedication to serving those who served. In preparation of receiving this citation, I went to the experts, the women that I assist for help with my remarks. I asked them, what would you like city officials to know about being a woman vet in Philly? Aside from the ask for forgiveness for parking tickets and help filling in potholes, overwhelmingly the group shared that time and time again they felt that once their uniform came off, their service and sacrifices often went unnoticed. These, contribute, these sentiments contribute to some harrowing statistics. Female veterans have a 250% higher risk than civilian women for suicide and make up 10% of the entire homeless veteran population. This continuous and prevalent theme of invisibility is one we try hard to change at the Women's Veterans Center, and this citation and recognition goes a long way in accomplishing that goal. The VMC is proud, beyond proud of our Women's Veteran facility, and we look forward to reaching more women veterans and supporters as we continue to grow in the years ahead. 
If you'd like to learn more about the VMC and the Women's Veterans Center and contribute celebrating women veterans, please join us next week with, in partnership with Councilwoman Blondell Reynolds-Brown, uh, Wednesday, November 8th at the We Work on Walnut Street. Thank you again for your continued support and celebration of women veterans and the Veterans Multi-Service Center. I'd like to say thank you to the entire City Council for honoring women who served the United States Army. As a veteran, yes, for me, it was quite a transition to transition from being a soldier into the civilian sector. And as Anna stated, a high percentage of women do experience homelessness after leaving and making that transition. I was one that was too proud to go to my mother and father and tell them what my experiences was. So I experienced homelessness myself for seven months while being a student at Temple University. So on behalf of of all of the current soldiers that are uh, serving around the country and around the world, and of course for those women who have made the ultimate sacrifice with their life, I thank you all. Councilor Beatties. Thank you. Chair recognizes Councilwoman Parker. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, I wish to be excused to attend to some off-site business and would like to be recorded as voting now on all bills and resolutions. Thank you, Councilwoman. Leave shall be granted and the record shall reflect your affirmative vote on all bills and resolutions. At this time, the chair recognizes Councilman Heenan who will present a resolution recognizing Comcast NBC Universal for being honored as the 2017 Employer Support Freedom Awards recipient with retired Brigadier General Carol Eggert, Senior Vice President of Comcast of Military and Veteran Affairs, and those accompanying her, please join the councilman at the podium. And joining Councilman Heenan, we have Councilwoman Blackwell, Councilman Green, Councilman O, Councilman Dom, Councilman Taubenberger, and Councilman Squilla. And Councilman O'Neill. Well, good morning, everybody. And uh, you know, I know presentations, uh, you know, take up a lot of time, but they are so well deserved on the accomplishments and and goals that not only do they achieve personally, professionally, uh, but as a city, as a whole, which we're so proud of. And today we're joined by retired Brigadier General and Vice President of Military Affairs from Comcast, NBC. 
Universal Carol uh, Eggert, who will be accepted as resolution, and Comcast has set a goal to hire more than 10,000 members of the military and their families uh, by the end of this year. Well, they've exceeded by 6,000 at the end of 2016, and to date, they are at 13,000 know, with the rest of the year to goal. So it's a tremendous accomplishment and outreach. So uh, Brigadier General, you know, you'll have time to remarks, but you know, on behalf of City Council, we thank you for all your due diligence and commitment to our veterans in, in our country. So thank you. Um, so today we honor and recognize and congratulating Comcast NBC Universal for being honored as the 2017 Employer Support Freedom Award recipient presented by the Secretary of Defense for their commitment to members of the military, veterans, and their families. And Whereas uh, Comcast NBC Universal is a valued corporate partner in the city of Philadelphia and is committed to providing family sustaining career opportunities to members of the military res reserves, veterans, and their families, and whereas the Secretary of Defense Employer Support Freedom Award is the highest recognition given by the U.S. government to employers for their support of their employees who serve in the Guard and Reserve, and Whereas nominations must come from a guard or reserve member who is employed by the organization they are nominating or from a family member and. Whereas the award was created to publicly recognize employers who provide exceptional support to their guard and reserve employees. It is the highest in a series of employer recognition awards given by the Department of Defense and. Whereas the Secretary of Defense Employer Support Freedom Award was instituted in 1996, and in the years since, a total of 220 employers have received the prestigious award. Today, up to 15 awards are presented each year to employers in three categories, large business, small business, and the public sector, and... Whereas... For this year's award, the department received nominations for 2,575 different employers, for which Comcast NBC Universal received more than 30 such nominations and. Whereas, on August 25th, Secretary Mattis presented Comcast NBC Universal and the outstanding class of 2017 recipients with the Employer Support Freedom Award, in no small part because of their commitment to bringing on more than 10,000 military hires by the close of 2017. Now, therefore, be it. Resolved by the Council of the City of Philadelphia that we hereby recognize and congratulate Comcast Universal, NBC Universal, for being honored as the 2017 Employer Support Freedom Re Award recipient, presented by the Secretary of Defense for its commitments to its members, military, veterans and their families and further be resolved that an engrossed copy of this resolution be presented to Comcast NBC Universal as evidence of a sincere respect and legislative body and in addition to a retired Brigadier General uh, I do want to uh, welcome and and thank Stephanie Kasu who is a vice president of Comcast here in our city uh, thank you for their commitment to veterans and their families as well uh, so congratulations And the chair recognizes General Carol Eggart for remarks. Good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you, Councilman Hainan, and thank you, Councilman O, and Council President, and certainly to the entire Philadelphia City Council. You heard a little bit about this resolution for the Secretary of Defense Award, and it certainly is a notable achievement for us and for the other 14 employers across the country who were recognized this year. But what I find most rewarding is that it is a grassroots level award. 
we had to be nominated by our very own employers, employees, and over 30 of our employees nominated Comcast for this recognition. And that's because we understand the criticality of supporting our Garden Reserve members. I'm sure you saw many of them on the streets here during the papal visit. You saw them activated for a hurricane relief, so we know the importance of our Garden Reserve is to protect our cities and our states. Now, I have served 34 years, and during that time, I served to engage emerging democracies. I supported developing and threatened democracies, and I protected standing democracies. And I know that it's public, private, and government partnerships that make our nation strong. So I want to thank each and every one of you in this room for recognizing Comcast and for the efforts you make to protect and support and engage our military community. While we have a presence throughout our country, our commitment starts here with our community in Philadelphia. And that's why we believe our involvement in locally led military and veteran focused organizations is the key to success in our veterans initiatives. I want to thank our partners at the Liberty USO. I think of the work they do, the volunteers, uh, what they do to help our transitioning veterans, the Veterans Multi-Service Center you just heard from, the Greater Philadelphia Veterans Network, Bunker Labs who support our um, veteran entrepreneurs. They dedicate themselves to inspiring, educating, and connecting veterans with the right people and resources. And it's everyone here at the City Council that supports these organizations. I think of the Travis Mannion Foundation, a local nonprofit that has become nationally recognized, leader in using the values of military service, perseverance, dedication, and resilience to build character in the young people of our city and throughout the country. And they support the families of our fallen heroes. In our efforts to become a company that is not just military friendly, but we like to think of ourselves as military ready. And we've learned that it's the very grassroots level, those relationships that allow us to truly make an impact on our community here in Philadelphia. So I'd like to thank you once again for this rec recognition because it has given Comcast just one more opportunity to share our message, the message that service <coughs> matters. Service to country, service to our communities, and service to all of our customers. So thank you all for the dedication in supporting our nation's defense forces, and thank you for welcoming me here to represent Comcast NBC Universal. Council BDs.
this time, the chair will recognize Councilman Jones, who will present a, rec a resolution recognizing Universal Soul. Would Lucky, Malisty, and those accompanying him please join the councilman at the podium. Ladies and gentlemen, coming to the city council chambers once again, please join me in welcoming Universal Circus. Give them a round of applause. I'm, I'm trying out for a ringmaster. See if I could do it. Not, not as good as Lucky. Not as good as Lucky. See, ladies and gentlemen, the 4th District is the home of many things and many tourist attractions, ranging from Benedict Arnold's mansion to the first computer ever created in the world in the 4th District. We have things like the Please Touch Museum, the Man, and the Dell. But included in those great things is the Universal Soul Circus, founded 24 years ago in Atlanta. This circus resumes again tonight at 52nd and Parkside, and it will be there almost all month. And I have no tickets. I'm telling you that now. Don't come to my office. I have no tickets. Many kids, seriously, in our community don't get to go to Disney World. They will never, ever see some of those exploits down there. But all kids in our region can make it to the circus tonight. And it's a safe, fun, family-oriented education. And I've never laughed so much uh, in one hour in my life. And I want to welcome them to uh, the city of Philadelphia again um, by recognizing them recognizing and honoring the Universal Soul Circus for 24 years of outstanding productions on the local and national levels. Whereas the Universal Soul Circus was founded 24 years ago in Atlanta, Georgia by a concert and theater promoter Cedric Walker, Walker had a vision of creating a circus with a large percentage of people of color performing and Councilman, thank you. And, and I, as a young man, I always wanted to, uh, had a dream of running away from the circus. I think I just uh, joined the circus. I was, and I think that's fantastic. Whereas, the Universal Soul Circus is a highly interactive combination of circus, arts, theater, and music that spans genres including pop, classic, R&B, Latin, hip-hop, jazz, and gospel. The show embraces and celebrates the unique and familiar aspects of global cultures and ethnicities in one stellar production and Whereas since its debut, the Universal Soul Circus has successfully turned the traditional circus world upside down. By 1997, the production had grown from a single show in Atlanta to a 10-city tour which further expanded to 19 cities by 1999 and 25 cities by 2012. The Universal Soul Circus even presented an international engagement in South Africa tour in 2001. And whereas the Universal Soul Circus has presented more than 11,000 performances to live audiences, exceeding 20 million patrons, and has been seen in more than 60 million households, both local and national television networks. The televised production was an Emmy-nominated HBO special, which remained in rotation for more than six years. And Recently, the Universe Soul Circus was the most prominently featured attraction at the Global Winter Wonderland, an international pop-up theme park in Atlanta, owned by one of the largest entertainment companies in the world, and... Whereas, alongside, well, no, I'm gonna start with, whereas Universal has been rated one of the top three circuses in America, alongside Ringling Brothers, Barnum & Bailey, and Cirque du Soleil. 
Universe Soul's fresh, cool, and hip approach to live family entertainment has earned it a coveted spot as one of the top 10 most requested family attractions across the country. Now, therefore, be it. Resolved by the City Council of Philadelphia that hereby recognizes and honors the Universe Soul Circus for 24 years of outstanding production on local and national level. A copy of the further resolved, a gross copy of this resolution be presented to the Universe Soul Circus, further evidence of the sincere admiration and gratitude of this legislative body. Congratulations. Thank you, chair. chair recognizes Lucky Mala Malazzi. Yes. Sorry for that. For remarks. Thank you, sir. Okay. Okay. Uh, there, there we go. All right, now, my name is Lucky Malati. I'm the ringmaster of the Universal Soul Circus. Once again, we want to thank you guys for honoring us. You know, it's always a pleasure to come to Philadelphia. And uh, this time around, we're going to give you guys a great show. So make sure you come out and check out the Universal Soul Circus. And I'm going to show you how that's done. When I say Big Top, you say Circus. Big Top. Circus. Big Top. Circus. Big Top. Circus. There you go, there you go, there you go. Thank you. Uh, Council uh, BDs. Thank you very much. The next order of business is communications. And the chair requests that the Sergeant of Arms delivers the messages from the mayor to the chief clerk. Mr. Decker, would you please read those messages? To the president and members of the Council of the City of Philadelphia. I am pleased to advise you that on November 1, 2017, I signed the following bill, which was passed by council at a session on October 19, 2017. Bill number 170792. And I am transmitting for the consideration of your honorable body a resolution approving the redevelopment contract of the Philadelphia Redevelopment Authority for the redevelopment and urban renewal of a portion of the Osage urban renewal area identified by house numbers and street addresses as 6216, 6217, 6218, 6222, 6223, 6224, 6225, 6226, 6228, 6230, 6232, 6236, 6238, 6248, 6250, and 6256 Osage Avenue, and 6212, 6214, 6218, 6220, 6222, 6224, 6226, 6228, 6232, 6234, 6236, 6238, 6240, 6242, 6244, 6246, 6250, 6252, and 6254 Pine Street. And also a resolution approving Joseph Mead to the Board of Directors for the Germantown Special Services District. And a resolution appointing Robert J. Markentuono to the Board of Directors for the Germantown Special Services District. 
and a resolution appointing Monique Pines to the Board of Directors for the Germantown Special Services District and an ordinance amending sections 6301 and 6503 of the Philadelphia Code entitled respectively food establishments and licenses and permits to revise licensing requirements related, relating to food establishments including requirements relating to restroom facilities, service, and seating. And an ordinance authorizing transfers and appropriations for fiscal year 2018 from the general fund and the grants revenue fund, certain or all city offices, departments, boards, and commissions to the general fund, the water fund, and the aviation fund, certain or all city offices, departments, boards, and commissions. And an ordinance authorizing transfers and appropriations for fiscal year 2017 from the general fund, the water fund, and the grants revenue fund, certain or all city offices, departments, boards, and commissions to the general fund, the water fund, the grants revenue fund, and the aviation fund, certain all city offices, departments, boards, and commissions, all under certain terms and conditions. Thank you, Mr. Decker. you have any additional communications? I have none, Mr. President. Thank you very much. And the next order of business will be the introduction of bills and resolutions. And this chair recognizes Councilwoman Reynolds-Brown. Good morning, Mr. President. Morning. I offer two resolutions, and I'd like to be recognized very briefly after the reading of the second uh, resolution. Thank you, Councilwoman. A privilege resolution recognizing the City of Philadelphia Streets Department for the, la for the launch of PhiloCycle, a program designed to enhance the city's ability to encourage recycling and other sustainable practices throughout Philadelphia. And that will be our next week's council session. And a privilege resolution congratulating the partners of the Philadelphia 2030 District for a successful launch and continued efforts to reduce the impact of the built environment for the benefit of all Philadelphians. And this year we recognize Councilwoman Reynolds-Brown. Yes, I wanted to seize the moment to acknowledge both Alex Dews, who's the Executive Director of the Delaware Valley Green Building Council, and his Policy and Program Manager, Katie Bartolotta, because uh, they served as partners with us in bringing forth this resolution. And ultimately, we're working towards an initiative to reduce our carbon footprint with the 2030 district. So if Alex Dews and Katie could rise, so we can say thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Thank you, Councilwoman. That will be on this week's final passage calendar. The chair recognizes Councilwoman Blackwell. Thank you, Mr. President. Today I have two, I introduced two bills and one resolution, and I note that this resolution was signed by each and every member of city council. Thank you, Councilwoman. Thank you. Say it wrong, it's, one, it's bill. one bill and two resolutions. I flipped it. Right. Thank, thank, thank you, Councilwoman. An ordinance providing for the submission to the qualified electors of the city of Philadelphia of an amendment to the educational supplement to the Philadelphia Home World Charter relating to the selection of the members of the Board of Education as approved by resolution of the council, fixing the date of a special election for such purpose, prescribing the form of ballot question to be voted on and authorizing the appropriate officers to publish notice and to make arrangements for the special election. And that will be referred to committee. And a non-privileged resolution approving the redevelopment contract of the Philadelphia Redevelopment Authority for the redevelopment and urban renewal of a portion of the Osage Avenue urban renewal area identified by host numbers and street addresses as 6216, 6217, 6218, 6221, 6222, 6223, 6224, 6225, 6226, 6228, 6230, 6232, 6236, 6238, 6248, 6250, 6256, and uh, uh, Osage Avenue, and 6212, 6214, 6218, 6220, 6222, 6224, 6226, 6228, 6232, 6234, 6236, 6238, 6240, 6242, 6244, 6246, 6250, 6252, and 6254 Pine Street. And next week's calendar. And a non-privileged resolution proposing an amendment to the educational supplement to the Philadelphia Home Rule Charter relating to the selection of the board, uh, uh, the members of the Board of Education and providing for the submission of the amendment to the electors of Philadelphia. And that will be referred to the appropriate committee. Chair, recognize Councilman Greenlee. Thank you, Mr. President. I have no bills or resolutions today. Thank you. Chair recognizes Councilman Heenan. Thank you, Mr. President. Today I offer one bill and one non-privileged resolution. 
Thank you. Thank you, Councilman. An ordinance amending Chapter 9, 3300 of the Philadelphia Code entitled Direction, Use, and Inspection of Tower Cranes by revising requirements related to tower cranes and adding requirements regarding the use and inspection of mobile cranes. I will refer to committee. And a privilege resolution authorizing the Committee on Rules to hold hearings examining the challenges faced by registered community organizations from abusive lawsuits commonly known as strategic lawsuits against public participation, discussing solutions thereof, including examining means of holding abusive litigation, litigants accountable, and authorizing the issuance of subpoenas to compel the production of relevant witnesses and documents. That will be on this week's calendar. Chair recognizes Councilman Jones. Thank you, Mr. President. One resolution. It's more in. More in yeah, okay. A privilege resolution recognizing and honoring Philadelphia Eagles safety, Malcolm Jenkins, for his advocacy in helping to reform the criminal justice system. And that will be on this week's calendar. Chair again recognizes Councilman Jones. On behalf of Councilman Johnson, I have uh, one bill. Thank you, Councilman. An ordinance amending Chapter 17, 1300 of the Philadelphia Code entitled Philadelphia 21st Century Minimum Wage and Benefit Standard by revising provisions regarding waivers of minimum wage, requ minimum wage requirements all under certain terms and conditions. And that bill will be referred to the appropriate committee. Chair, recognize Councilwoman Keona Sanchez. Thank you, Council President. I have two bills and one privilege resolution. Thank you, Councilwoman. An ordinance authorizing transfers and appropriations for fiscal year 2017 from the general fund, the water fund, certain all city offices, departments, boards, and commissions. The Grants Revenue Fund, certain of all city offices, departments, boards, and commissions, and the Aviation Fund, certain of all city offices, departments, boards, and commissions, to the General Fund, certain of all city offices, departments, boards, and commissions, the Water Fund, certain of all city offices, departments, boards, and commissions, the Grants Revenue Fund, certain of all city offices, departments, boards, and commissions, and the Aviation Fund, certain of all city offices, departments, boards, and commissions. Refer to committee. And an ordinance authorizing transfers in fiscal year, for fiscal year 2018. From the general fund, certain all city offices, departments, boards, and commissions. The grants revenue fund, certain all city offices, departments, boards, and commissions. The general fund, certain all city offices, departments, boards, and commissions. The water fund, certain all city offices, departments, boards, and commissions. And the aviation fund, certain all city offices, departments, boards, and commissions. And that will be referred to committee. And a privilege resolution recognizing and honoring Prevention Point Philadelphia on the occasion of its 25th anniversary. And that will be on this week's calendar. The chair recognizes Councilman Green. <coughs> Thank you, Council President. I have one privilege resolution. Thank you, Councilman. A privilege resolution authorizing the Committee on Commerce and Economic Development to hold hearings regarding initiatives to support employee ownership, including a as a retirement strategy for small business owners. This week's calendar, Chair recognizes Councilman Don. Good morning, Council President. Um, I have one privilege resolution today and Two bills on behalf of Councilwoman Parker. Thank you, Councilman. An ordinance amending Chapter 14600 of the Philadelphia Code entitled Use Regulations by Creating Regulations for Daycare Use. And refer to committee. And an ordinance amending Title 14 of the Philadelphia Code on Title Zoning and Planning to create a new 9th District overlay to limit the materials that may be used on building facades. Also referred to committee. And a privilege resolution recognizing, honoring, and congratulating the 2017 Philadelphia Business Journal's Women of Distinction for their hard work and dedication to excellence in their representation of their respective industries and the City of Philadelphia. And that will be this week's calendar. Chair again, Councilman, did you have any? Councilman, you did, did you have anything for yourself? Was it? Okay. Right. Thank you. Chair recognizes Councilwoman again. Good, after, good morning, Council President. Morning. I have one privileged resolution today. Thank you, Councilwoman. A 
A privilege resolution commemorating the 50th anniversary of the November 17, 1967 citywide black student walkout and honoring the continue, continuing tradition of youth organize, organizing and activism around education, equity, and racial justice in the city of Philadelphia. And that will be on this week's calendar. Chair recognize Councilman Taubenberger. Good morning, Council President. I have no bills or resolutions this morning. Thank you, Thank you Councilman. Chair recognizes Councilman O'Neill. Thank you, Mr. President. I have no bills or resolutions. Thank you, Councilman. Chair recognizes Councilman Squilla. Thank you, Mr. President. I offer two bills, uh, one, co one I co-sponsor with you. Thank you, Councilman. An ordinance authorizing the Bagel Place shop to install and own and maintain an open air sidewalk cafe at 404 Queen Street. For the committee. And an ordinance amending Chapter 9200 of the Philadelphia Code entitled Commercial Activities on Streets by amending Section 9211 entitled Boxes for Distribution of News and Printed Material relating to the regulation of newspaper boxes on the public sidewalk. Refer to committee. And the chair recognizes Councilwoman Baz. Thank you, Mr. President. I offer one bill and one privilege resolution that I'd like to be heard after the title is read on the bill. Thank you, Councilwoman. An ordinance amending section 6301 and 6503 of the Philadelphia Code, respectively, food establishments and licenses and permits, to revise licensing requirements relating to food establishments, including requirements relating to restroom facilities, service, and seating. Chair recognizes Councilwoman Bass. Thank you, Mr. President. And I'm just so excited about this bill that's being introduced today, and I wanted to give just a little bit of background about the bill. And this is primarily uh, a bill to deal with nuisance businesses um, that we know as stop and goes in our neighborhoods. And I want to thank you for all of the work that you've done on this issue and for being uh, so supportive on this particular matter. Um, in the beginning, there was, you know, when you had a deli in your neighborhood, a deli was a deli and a bar was a bar. And they were two completely separate establishments. They were local and they served food in a neighborhood and many were sit-down restaurants. Yesterday, I was at 26th and Allegheny, my neighborhood where I grew up, and my mind wandered to Mark House Deli, which was right down the street at 25th and Allegheny. They had, uh, it was a deli. They had booths to sit down and eat. They had counter service, and it was real food. You could sit down, you could take out, and it wasn't alone. There were other establishments like Ida's. Remember Ida's in North Philly? Um, and then there were white tablecloth restaurants in North Philadelphia, like Fisher's on North Broad Street, which was uh, around where Temple Medical is now. I remember my mother took me there for my 16th birthday. And when you eat something really good, you remember it for forever. I still remember the soup. The bill stretched her budget, and it was a rare treat for us. But these were amenities that were in our neighborhoods. Somewhere along the way, things changed. Most of our sit-down restaurants closed, and local spots that served cheesesteaks and hoagies, and some of the best in the city were all of a sudden no longer in business. But what did come, they didn't close completely, was that even though it would say deli on the outside, advertising those same cheesesteaks, hoagies, and seafood, but actually serving no food flagrantly disregarding city violations. Again, no food. Uh, with uh, The food that was served was a break with the spirit of the law as intended. Oodles and noodles just doesn't cut it. No bathrooms available to customers, which is the law. Tables and chairs for 30 was out of the question. They were a haven or are a haven for loitering. And allegedly, uh, other nuisance activity happens, including the sale of Lucy's allegedly public urination and defecation, and possibly other items sold by the proprietor or, and or others. Today with this bill, we start the process to change that. Currently, with stop and goes in my neighborhood, um, they're mostly in poor neighborhoods, mostly in the hood as we know it. Most of these establishments sell beer, some sell liquor. I can buy a shot, and my eight-year-old daughter can also buy a bag of potato chips at the same time. And there's a reason why we don't allow children in bars, but somehow this has been allowed and accepted in stop and goes. 
I have more stop and goes in my district than I have public schools, and something is really, really wrong with what is happening here. I also want to take a moment and thank Councilwoman Janie Blackwell, who coined the term stop and go many moons ago and has been a fighter against nuisance businesses, and we wouldn't be here with this bill without her as well. So many thanks to Councilwoman Blackwell. But again, today we start to change the process. This bill, I believe, is a game changer. And I want to join with Councilwoman Blackwell, Council President Clark, and all members of Council who are in support of this bill. Special thanks to the City Law Department, LNI, Health, and the Police Department for making this happen. It actually came together about a year ago. We did a tour with Health Commissioner Farley, LNI Commissioner Perry, then Fire Commissioner Sawyer, and Liquor Control Board and Enforcement Officers. They were astonished at what they saw. This bill will revise licensing requirements to food establishments related to restroom facilities, service, and seating to ensure that we don't have these makeshift bars that serve liquor to vulnerable populations from, in, in some cases from 9 a.m. until 2 a.m. every single day. And as an aside, we hear a lot every day about the opioid and heroin crisis, and this is another uh, legal, but legal, self-medication that folks are doing, and this issue deserves a lot of attention as well. This bill restores dignity to providing food and food service to our communities. It requires that either establishments be defined as a large or small establishment. Large establishments are required to have two restroom facilities, no more bathrooms that cut through kitchens, which are real gems if you've ever seen one of those. Large establishments must remove physical bar barriers, also known as the plexiglass, the prison style uh, service that, that many of these establishments have. Food and in the cases where they do serve food without dignity. Readily available and accessible tables and chairs, no more fold up chairs uh, pushed together in a corner, no tables to be seen and specific square footage requirements which must be adhered to. I look forward to working with all of the departments to ensure that enforcement uh, is actual and that it happens. I'm so very hopeful on this issue because I always tell folks you don't have to have things in your neighborhood that you don't want to have. And on this issue, I think that the community, my colleagues, you know, we're all the way in. We're all ready to put together our hands, roll up our sleeves, and do the work that is necessary to make these establishments the acceptable food establishments that we deserve in our communities. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you so much, Councilwoman, and thank you for your continued awesome work on this very, very important issue. Thank you. Look forward to casting an affirmative vote on the bill. And a privilege resolution honoring the life and legacy of James Jimmy, Jimmy Tyoon Sr., who passed away on November 1, 2017, at the age of 87. That will be on today's calendar. Thank you. Is that it? Yeah. Okay. Chair recognizes Councilman O. Thank you very much, Council President, I'll for one resolution on your behalf. Thank you, Councilman. A privilege resolution recognizing and celebrating the veterans of Philadelphia and its surrounding counties in Pennsylvania, New Jersey, and Delaware, Philadelphia Veterans Parade, Inc., and the Philadelphia Veterans Advisory Commission on the occurrence of the 2017 Philadelphia Veterans Parade. And that will be in this week's calendar. That concludes our introduction of bills and resolutions. Uh, the next order of business is report from the committee, and the chair recognizes Councilman Greenlee for a report from the committee on rules. Thank you, Mr. President. The Committee on Rules reports five bills with a favorable recommendation. Thank you. Mr. Decker, please read that report. To the President and members of the Council of the City of Philadelphia, the Committee on Rules, which is referred bill number 170714, entitled an ordinance amending chapter 16600 of the Philadelphia Code, entitled redevelopment proposals and contracts by further providing with respect to requirements for Council's approval of redevelopment proposals and redevelopment contracts <laughs> submitted to Council for approval under the provisions of the Urban Redevelopment Law. 
and Bill 170793 entitled an ordinance to amend the Philadelphia zoning maps by changing the zoning designations of certain areas of land located within an area bounded by Front Street, Oxford Street, American Street, Master Street, Sixth Street, and Girard Avenue. And Bill 170803 entitled an ordinance to amend the Philadelphia zoning maps by changing the zoning designations of certain areas of land located within an area bounded by Trenton Avenue, Lehigh Avenue, Belgrade Street, Somerset Street, Delaware Expressway, Cumberland Street, Thompson Street, Aramingo Avenue, and York Street. And Bill number 170818, entitled an ordinance amending Title 14 of the Philadelphia Code, entitled Zoning and Planning to revise certain provisions of Chapter 14600, entitled Use Regulations, by amending the green roof calculations. And Bill number 170819, entitled an ordinance to amend the Philadelphia zoning maps by changing the zoning designations of certain areas of land, located within an area bounded by Girard Avenue, 6th Street, Burke Street, and 10th Street. Respectfully reports it as considered the same and returns the attached bills to council with a favorable recommendation. Thank you. The chair again recognizes Councilman Greenlee. Thank you, Mr. President. I move that the rules of council be suspended. So as to permit first reading this day of bill numbers 170714, 170793, 170803, 170818, and 170819. Thank you. It has been moved and probably second that the rules of council be suspended so as to permit first reading this day of bills number 170714, 170793, 170803, 170818, and 170819. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed, ayes have it. These bills will be placed on our first reading calendar today. Chair now recognizes Councilwoman Blackwell for a report from the Committee on Finance. Thank you, Mr. President. The Committee on Finance reports out two bills with a favorable recommendation. Thank you. Mr. Decker, please read that report. The Committee on Finance, which is referred bill number 170717, entitled an ordinance amending chapter 19-4200 of the Philadelphia Code, entitled New Sustainable Businesses, to expand the tax relief offered to such businesses and to make technical corrections. And Bill Number 170878 entitled an ordinance authorizing and approving the execution and delivery of a service agreement between the City of Philadelphia and the Philadelphia Redevelopment Authority relating to the financing of a home repair program for city homeowners, approving the issuance by, by such authority of bonds, notes, or other evidences of indebtedness, including reimbursement obligations related to lines or letters of credit in one or more series to finance or refinance such program, and authorizing and approving the obligation of the city to pay in full when due the service fee and other amounts payable under the service agreement, authorizing certain city officers to take certain actions required to issue such bonds, notes, or other evidences of, inde of indebtedness, Respectfully reports that it's considered the same and returns the attached bills to council with a favorable recommendation. Chair again, recognize Councilwoman Blackwell. Thank you, Mr. President. I move that the rules of council be suspended so as to permit first reading this day of bill numbers 170717 and 170878. Second. Thank you. It has been moved and properly second that the rules of council be suspended so as to permit first reading this day of bills number 170, 717, 170, 878. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed, ayes have it. These bills will be placed on our first reading calendar today. The chair now recognizes Councilman Jones for a report from the Committee of Commerce and Economic Development. Thank you, Mr. President. The Committee on e Commerce and Economic Development reports one bill with a favorable recommendation. Thank you. Mr. Decker, please read that report. The Committee on Commerce and Economic Development, to which is referred Bill Number 170726, entitled an ordinance amending Title 17 of the Philadelphia Code, entitled Contracts and Procurement, by enacting a new subsection 171605, subparagraph 3, to provide for additional oversight by the City Council of compliance with all economic opportunity plans for the, for the participation of minority and female workers, minority-owned disadvantaged business enterprises, female-owned disadvantaged business enterprises, and disabled-owned disadvantaged business enterprises. <laughs> Respectfully reports that it's considered the same and returns the attached bill to council with a favorable recommendation. Thank you. It's been moved. Sorry. Uh, Chair recognize Councilman Jones again. Sorry. Thank you, Mr. President. I move that the rules of council be suspended so as to permit first reading this day of bill number 170726. Thank you, Councilman. It's been moved and properly second that the rules of council be suspended so as to permit first reading this day of bills number 170, 726. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed, ayes have it. 
And that bill will be on our first reading calendar today. That concludes our reports on the committee. And the next order of business is consideration of the calendar. I note that those bills just reported from committee was the suspension of the rules have been deemed to have had a first reading. These bills will be on our second reading and final passage calendar at our next session of council. Uh, as there are no additional bills on our first reading calendar, the chair recognizes Councilman Heenan for the purpose of calling up bills and resolutions on a final passage calendar today. Thank you, Mr. President. The following resolutions of bills are being called up for the second reading and final passage calendars today. Bill numbers 170907, 170934, 170936, 170943, 170948, and 170950. All other resolutions and bills are being held. Thank you, Councilor. Uh, before considering our public comment today, we will have our public comment session. Um, if there is anyone who is interested in testifying on a bill or resolution on the final passage calendar today, if you have not already done so, you may sign up at the table to my left. When your name is called, you will go to the podium in the middle of the council chambers. There's a device on that podium when the light turns green. It will be your time to speak. When the light turns yellow, you will have 30 seconds to conclude your remarks. When the light turns red, we'd ask that you please adhere to our guidelines and conclude your remarks. You will be given three minutes to testify. Mr. Decker, please call the first name on the list. Alex Dews. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for the opportunity uh, to be here. I just want to thank Councilwoman Reynolds Brown for introducing the uh, resolution on the 2030 district. And I also want to thank uh, Councilman Jones, who is one of my mentors. Uh, formerly when I was an intern in City Council. It's great to be back here and to acknowledge that the city government is one of our really crucial partners on the 2030 district effort to reduce the climate impact of our built environment here in Philadelphia. I uh, want to recognize uh, Council President's leadership with the Philadelphia Energy Authority and the Energy Campaign. Uh, all of this is really important for us to be able to work together with the business community, uh, along with our utility companies and the city government in order to really address climate change in a meaningful way. We're excited about the work already underway with the 2030 district with so many good partners at the table, uh, again, including city agencies, but also this is a private sector-led initiative, and the business community has really stepped up to show that they are ready to take on the challenge of reducing climate impact from the built environment, uh, saving money, creating economic opportunity along the way. So thank you again for the opportunity to be here. Uh, and because of the theme today, I also wanted to mention we're really close to getting some of the school district's buildings on board uh, with the 2030 district effort where there's already a lot of great work on, on capital improvement and energy efficiency happening. So thank you again. I appreciate it. Thank you so much for your testimony. Joe Danahel, commenting on 170934, 170950, 170683, and 170948. And good afternoon. Good afternoon. This is the official decree of the people in Red Band Damas Quo Warranto, and as such requires immediate action remedy. Every week, council, mayor, and others transfer private property to government, probably illegally. What could be more fascist than to deny rights to sovereign people? Recently, Philadelphia officials have called out others as fascist Nazis. Did fascist Nazis steal their own people's homes without due process and compensation? Sovereign people owning property should be a goal of a constitutional government. The 14th Amendment, no state shall make or enforce any law that shall abridge the privilege or immunities of the citizens of the United States, nor shall the state deprive any people of life, liberty, or property. If thou shalt not covet, if thou shalt not steal, are commandments from God. Why has Council Mayor and others denied commandments, oaths, constitutions, and laws to steal homes. Founding fathers wrote extensively about the, the inviolable property rights of the people. Clearly, prosecution of oath, constitution, and law violations must occur to leave no doubt that we are a republic governed by the rule of law. The Constitution laws require me remedy of this breach of law, breach of clothes, breach of fiduciary duty. Your oath of office requires you to act or face prison. 
42 USC 1982, 1983, 1985, 1986, 1987, 18 USC, 241, 242, 2381, 2384, PA Constitution, Article 1, Sections 1 through 11, 26 PA CSA, 703, 705, 708, 709, 712, 713, 716, and other laws listed in SCOTUS, 158965, 14133I. 14406 appear violated. I call for the federal and commonwealth governments to perform their constitutional obligations to investigate and prosecute all involved in the theft and illegal deed transfer of my home, 1038 West Wyoming Avenue, the denial of God given 42 USC 1982 property rights for 20 three years is egregious, extraordinary, oath violating and requires immediate remedy. A just government must obey the rule of law. This color of law government must have its charter to govern revoked until constitutionally compliant government is installed. Public servants cannot refuse their sworn duty to act any more than a fireman can refuse to fight a fire. The sovereign people require the constitution laws be enforced. Jail is required for all who violate oath or law. I remind counsel, it takes a lot of cooperation to create and allow monumental corruption. Thank you for your testimony. There are no other speakers on the public comment list, Mr. President. Thank you very much, Mr. Decker. We will now move to our calendar. And can you please read the title 170907? A resolution urging the Trump administration to rescind its decision to repeal the Clean Power Plan. Chair recognizes Councilman Greenlee. I think, I think it's Councilman Reynolds Brown. Oh, I'm sorry. Chair recognizes Councilman Reynolds Brown. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I thank you, the Councilman. <laughs> You're next. <laughs> Move the adoption. It's been moved to probably second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed, the ayes have it. And resolution 170907 is adopted. Mr. Decker, 170934. A resolution authorizing the Commissioner of Public Property to execute and deliver to the Philadelphia Redevelopment Authority without consideration deeds conveying conditional fee simple title to certain city owned lots and pieces of ground with the buildings and improvements thereon, situated in the 43rd Ward of the City of Philadelphia. Chair sure, now recognizes Councilman Greenlee. Thank you, Ms. Thank you, Ms. President. I move the adoption of the resolution. Second. It's been moved and properly second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, the ayes have it. 170934 is adopted. Mr. Decker, 170936. A resolution calling on the Pennsylvania General Assembly to, to amend section 412.2 of the Pennsylvania Election Code to increase the minimum compensation provided to election officers and workers, which has not been increased in decades. Chair recognizes Councilman Jones. Thank you, Mr. President. I move for its adoption. Second. It's been moved and properly second. All those in favor say aye. aye. Those opposed, ayes have it. 170936 is adopted. Mr. Decker, 170943. A resolution appointing Blaine Stoddard to the Board of Directors of the Philadelphia Land Bank. Chair recognizes Councilman Johnson. Council President, I move for the adoption of the resolution. Second. It's been moved and properly second. All those in favor say aye. Those opposed, ayes have it. 170943 is adopted. Mr. Decker, 170948. A resolution authorizing the Commissioner of Public Property to execute and deliver to the Philadelphia Redevelopment Authority without consideration deeds conveying conditional fee simple title to serve city on lots of pieces of ground with the buildings and improvements thereon, situated in the 25th Ward of the City of Philadelphia. Chair recognizes Council Squilla. Thank you, Mr. President. I move for the adoption. Second. It's been moved and properly second. All those in favor say aye. Those opposed, ayes have it. 170948 is adopted. Mr. Decker, 170950. A resolution authorizing the Commissioner of Public Property to execute and deliver to the Philadelphia Redevelopment Authority without consideration deeds conveying conditional fee simple title to certain city on lots of pieces of ground with the buildings and improvements are on, situated in the 12th Ward of the City of Philadelphia. Chair recognizes Councilwoman Bass. Thank you, Mr. President. I move for the adoption. Been moved to property second. All those in favor say aye. Those opposed, ayes have it. 170950 is adopted. Uh, Mr. Decker, we have any additional resolutions? A resolution recognizing the City of Philadelphia Streets Department for the launch of Fill a Cycle, a program designed to enhance the city's ability to encourage recycling and other sustainable practices throughout Philadelphia, introduced by Councilwoman Reynolds Brown. 
Chair recognizes Councilwoman Reynolds Brown. Thank you, Mr. President. I move for the adoption. It's been moved and properly second. All those in favor? Aye. Those opposed? Ayes have it. And that resolution is adopted. And a resolution congratulating the partners of the Philadelphia 2030 District for a successful launch and continued efforts to reduce the impact of the built environment for the benefit of all Philadelphians, introduced by Councilwoman Reynolds Brown. Chair again, recognize Councilwoman Reynolds Brown. Thank you, Mr. President. I move for the adoption. It's been moved and properly second. All those in favor say aye. aye. Those opposed, ayes have it, and that resolution is adopted. And a resolution authorizing the Committee on Rules to hold hearings examining the challenges faced by registered community organizations from abusive lawsuits commonly known as strategic lawsuits against public participation, discussing solutions thereof, including examining means of holding abusive litigants accountable, and authorizing the issuance of subpoenas to compel the production of relevant witnesses and documents introduced by Councilman Heenan. Chair recognize Councilman Heenan. Thank you, Mr. President. I move for the adoption. Second. It's been moved and properly second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed, ayes have it. And that resolution is adopted. And a resolution recognizing and honoring Philadelphia Eagles safety Malcolm Jenkins for his advocacy in helping to reform the criminal justice system introduced by Councilman Jones. Chair recognizes Councilman Jones. Thank you, Mr. President. I move for its adoption. It's been moved and properly second. All those in favor say aye. Those opposed, ayes have it, and that resolution is adopted. And a resolution recognizing and honoring Prevention Point Philadelphia on the occasion of its 25th anniversary, introduced by Councilwoman Gunnar Sanchez. To chair recognizes Councilman Green. Councilwoman Sanchez, I move for the adoption of the resolution. It's been moved to probably second. All those in favor say aye. Those opposed, ayes have it, and that resolution is adopted. And a resolution authorizing the Committee on Commerce and Economic Development to hold hearings regarding initiatives to support employee ownership, including as a retirement strategy for small business owners, introduced by Councilman Green. Chair recognize Councilman Green. Thank you, Council President. I move for the adoption of the resolution. It's been moved and probably second. All those in favor say aye. Those opposed, ayes have it, and that resolution is adopted. And a resolution recognizing, honoring, and congratulating the 2017 Philadelphia Business Journal's Women of Distinction for their hard work and dedication to excellence in their representation of their respective industries and the City of Philadelphia, introduced by Councilman Dom. Chair recognize Councilman Dom. Thank you, Council President. Move for the adoption of the resolution. It's been moved to property second. All those in favor say aye. Those opposed, ayes have it, and that resolution is adopted. In a resolution commemorating the 50th anniversary of the November 17, 1967 citywide black student walkout and honoring the continuing tradition of youth organizing and activism around education, equity, and racial justice in the city of Philadelphia, introduced by Councilwoman Gim. Chair recognize Councilwoman Gim. Thank you very much, Council President. I wanted to acknowledge my co-sponsors on the resolution, Council Members Parker, Blackwell, Bass, Jones, Johnson, Reynolds, Brown, and Green, and just uh, wanted to share a little bit about this resolution. It's a moment that spurred a movement that we're still seeing today, which had a lot to do with self-determination, community control of schools, and equity, and the fight for, for young people, a fight that was led by youth, black youth in particular, had a critical role, um, and continued to play a critical role in the passionate fight that we see around public education. Um, back then, in 1967, uh, the students had organized and mobilized for years to write a student bill of rights. They planned a series of walkouts, culminating in the walkout of 3,500 students from high schools all across the city. It was a joyful affair, one that was marked with hope, energy, and possibility. Students spoke about many different things that still resonate with us today, including uh, the need for more black teachers and administrators, the teaching of black history, the ability to wear African clothing, the ability to protest the flag even, and the Pledge of Allegiance. Um, but these students uh, uh, were met by a significant uh, response to their um, pushback at, in front of the Board of Education. Witnesses that saw police uh, charge the students and beat them wept um, with tears, and many of them um, became and moved on to do very become very politically active in our city today. Um, the movement uh, continued on for the next 50 years with youth leaders proving that they're not just the leaders of tomorrow, they're the leaders of today. 
Um, in 2005, the School Reform Commission mandated African American history and specifically drew on the struggle and spirit of these students. And it was really nice to see in the audience today former SRC Chair Sandra Dungy Glenn, who really ushered that through. And today, Philadelphia's youth movements, including Philadelphia Student Union, Youth United for Change, Asian Americans United, Viet Lead, also continued this tradition and broadening their work into deeply intersexual organizing. Um, City Council, our office, the Africa, and in partnership with the African, African American Museum of Philadelphia, is supporting a series of events from uh, on November 17th and 18th, including a panel and reception with Matthew Countryman, who's the author of Up South, who documented a whole chapter on community control of schools in Philadelphia and the catalyst for the black power movement in the city. And on November 18th, there'll be a citywide community teach-in with young people and activists then and today. Um, and we certainly welcome anybody to support, be part of that, um, join in, and celebrate. And with that, I call for the adoption of the resolution. Thank you. It's been moved to probably second. All those in favor say aye. Those opposed, ayes have it. That resolution is adopted. And a resolution honoring the life and legacy of James Jimmy Tyune Sr., who passed away on November 1, 2017, at the age of 87. Introduced by Councilwoman Bass. Point of information. Councilman Jones. Can I request the author of the resolution? Can we do this by a standing vote? She, oh, sorry. Councilwoman was going to do that. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. President. I move for the adoption of the resolution through a standing and silent vote. Thank you. Thank you, Councilwoman. And a resolution recognizing and celebrating the veterans of Philadelphia and its surrounding counties in Pennsylvania, New Jersey, and Delaware, Philadelphia Veterans Parade, Inc., and the Philadelphia Veterans Advisory Commission on the occurrence of the 2017 Philadelphia Veterans Parade, introduced by Councilman O on behalf of Council President Clark. Chair recognize Councilman O. Thank you very much. On your behalf, Council President, I move for the option of the resolution. It's been moved to property second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed, ayes have it. And that resolution is adopted. There are no other resolutions on the final passage calendar, Mr. President. Thank you very much, Mr. Decker. That concludes our calendar for today. And at this point, we are asking for speeches on behalf of the minority. And the chair recognizes Councilman Taubenberger. Thank you, Council President. I just would like to publicly congratulate my colleague and friend, Kenyatta Johnson, on his birthday. I do appreciate that and he's a, he's a good man to serve with. I also want to uh, <laughs> acknowledge Councilman Green for organizing our council uh, trick-or-treat on, on Friday evening. I thought it was a wonderful thing uh, to see the young people and their faces when I actually gave them candy and some were scared and others were not, but it was a heck of a lot of fun, and not only for those children, but for our staffs. And I'd like to tell Councilman Green publicly again, thank you so much for organizing this, and you can count on my support and my office's support in the future to do this again. I liked it. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman. Chair recognize Councilman O. Thank you very much, Council President. I wanted to uh, note uh, the uh, importance of today with the mayor's uh, speech. I do also want to um, say I admire his straightforwardness uh, and I appreciate his directness in uh, stating the difficulties and challenges of this situation. Um, I would also say that I distributed to our colleagues uh, the report that uh, Councilman uh, Janie Blackwell and I uh, had undertaken in a series of, uh, of hearings regarding best practices in education. Uh, simply because I believe that we will have many things to consider um, as we move forward with the actual complexities and challenges of both funding uh, public schools in Philadelphia and ensuring that there is a uh, governance structure that will actually ensure equity for all our students and children in our city. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman. Uh, today is the beginning of a long journey. Chair recognized Councilman Jones. 
President, I was told as a kid, loud don't make right. But it does make you listen. In conjunction with the office formerly known as MOX, we were conducting the other day a poverty simulation. And what that basically is, is that we take a amount of money, we put it in a simulator where we do scenarios about people, 26% of the population living below the poverty belt. So you have to manage a budget, try to make a dollar out of 50 cents, go to the grocery store, welfare department, and all the things balancing priorities of the poor. And in the middle of that simulation, life broke out. Asa Khalifa came in and interrupted the proceeds and started passionately talking about issues that he cared about, suggested that we should, instead of simulating, come see the real hood. Um, those of you who know me in this chamber, if, if ever my uh, street cred is, is challenged, I accept that all day, every day. And so we went out and we caught the L and we found ourselves at Kensington and Allegheny. I have to tell you that um, my colleague, uh, Councilwoman Sanchez, always talks about her district being the poorest district in Philadelphia. I mean, ever since we came here, she's been saying that. And we nod appropriately and, and say, yeah, yeah, yeah. But KNA is ground zero. And um, what I saw out there uh, was something that Councilwoman Sanchez deals with every single day. I saw a vet who had served his country proudly, uh, priced out of an old neighborhood, moved into concentrated poverty where he had to uh, live when he served in foreign countries, their, their circumstance was better than his. I saw a mother that was too busy to stop and really have an engaging conversation because she was coming from her second job where she had a second shift where she couldn't afford to leave her kids in daycare and not pay that extra fee. I met drug dealers that had more authority on that corner than law enforcement. Politely told me, you know, oh, that's nice, but keep it moving, I'm working. I walked around the corner and a gun battle broke out. I mean, this was real life, it wasn't simulated, and I have to admit um, that what uh, Councilwoman Sanchez deals with every day is something we cannot ignore. We have to do something about that level of deep poverty. That's not poverty, that's deep poverty, where kids who walk through that every day lose hope that they will ever get out that this is what the world is, that the 10 square blocks that they experience every day is the entire world. And for us to see um, corner stores that have no vegetables, no fruit, nothing healthy but chips and a soda is not a meal. And so when we got to see that, I, I will admit, I will admit that it moved me that I immediately called my colleague and said, tell me what I can do. That's not my district, I get it. We are very territorial. But poverty knows no bounds like that. And with Philadelphia being discovered as a great place to live, work, and play, we are concentrating that poverty in smaller and smaller areas and intensifying the misery. We've gotta do something. We can do better, they deserve better, and we gotta make it happen. And I just appreciate, even though it was loud, even though it was rude, we, 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 we have a new term now called hoodnapped. I wasn't kidnapped because it wasn't forcible. I went on my own, but I was taken, compelled to go to the hood. And each of us got a poor district, a poor area in our district. It's nothing new. But I will say, from a 50,000 foot view, it's much different the reality that those 26% of people face every day, and it can't be ignored. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Councilman. Chair, can I ask Councilman Heenan? Thank you, Council President. Um, I want to 
non-school note and uh, you know the the news cycle change some exciting news has happened with our Pennsylvania codes <laughs> when it comes to building construction uh, through the help of City Council uh, the construction industry led by Representative Bill Keller the governor and the administration uh, we were able to successfully pass a bill HB 409 which allows the city of first class which is the city of Philadelphia to adopt the 2018 code so it's going to be on a fast track it'll be coming in front of City Council for approval and sign off and public hearings there will also be a public hearing process with with the Commonwealth with our uniform construction code committee which I'll be presenting along with you uh, to this body for input and codes that are philosoph or Philadelphia centric that you know really uh, deals with the quality of life and issues that we all concerned about you know such as lead and other um, other bills and measures that we have passed through this body you know through our due diligence and responsibility so uh, uh, we did it and it may not be sexy it may not you know it's kind of kind of boring but it affects everybody's daily life and the quality of life and public safety so I uh, just want to let everybody know thank you for their due diligence and look forward to working with everybody and making sure that we on a fast track here you know have all all our stakeholders and our constituents be made aware and have their input heard so thank you Thank you, Councilman. We've been working on that for a long time. Chair recognized Councilwoman Bass. Thank you, Mr. President, and I also want to thank our mayor for beginning to lay out what public education, the next chapter of public education, is uh, going to look like post-SRC here in Philadelphia. And to that end, I wanted to announce that we're going to be hosting community-based hearings. Um, the first one is going to be next Wednesday, November 8th, 6 to 8 p.m. at Lutheran Theological Seminary, 7301 Germantown Avenue. And we're going to have a community conversation in five different locations throughout the 8th District um, with former SRC Commissioner Sandra Dungy Glenn. Um, and also at some point, uh, some of my colleagues may join us. And I know that I spoke yesterday with Councilwoman Blackwell, who is a chair of the Education <coughs> Committee here in City Council who has agreed to join us, and also Councilwoman Gim, uh, who I'm just signing up now <laughs> to attend. I got the thumbs up. I know she'll be there. So I just wanted to announce that. And also, um, you, know, you know, regarding the passing of um, Jimmy Tyoon, who was a good friend to all of us, and always some good advice, sage advice, and, um, you know, just a, a wonderful person to be around. He was uh, truly, uh, you know, he just had a presence that made you want to be around him. And I wanted to yield, yield some of my time to Councilman Squilla, who I know represented uh, Mr. Tyoon and who, um, you know, had a personal relationship with, so. Thank you, Councilman. Thank you, uh, Councilman. Um, it is important that Ca uh, Councilman Tyoon, who was uh, the first district council person and uh, also lived in the district. And one thing I remember when uh, coming into council, I always remembered that Jim Tyoon was a person that was at every location, every place. And I remember seeing him and I said, you know, if I become council person, I want to make sure that I'm available as much as you were to your constituents. And that's something that Jimmy Tyoon represented. He was, he was always everywhere and he, he always cared about the needs of the community. And, um, and on this day, it's, it's great to honor him um, <clears throat> with this resolution. So I want to thank Councilwoman Bass, happy to co-sponsor that. And uh, also wanted to make a point uh, about the Councilman Jones's point about K&A &A and that how uh, Councilman Sanchez and myself uh, share that area and you know uh, poverty is part of that problem over there but it, it's just part of it and it's uh, the opioid epidemic that's really driving uh, the homelessness and, and the crime and everything that's going on around there and, and we really do need to step up and, and make some drastic changes there and working with uh, Councilwoman uh, Sanchez and the police and the administration uh, hopefully to, to come up with new ways to attack this because what we're doing now isn't working but Hopefully, uh, what we do in the future will work to make a difference. And uh, I want to thank Councilman Jones for, for visiting that and visit, come into a, a district. It's not, people usually go see the good parts of people's district and not 
the uh, tough parts of our districts, but uh, it is something that is on our radar and something that we are addressing. And then we go to those community meetings, believe me, we hear it. And uh, so it is, it is important to um, make sure that we continue to address this problem and work on solutions. So thank you. Thank you, Councilman. Thank both of you. Uh, Chair recognizes Councilman Johnson. Thank you, Council President. Just a couple of brief statements. I want to also follow up on the comments of my colleagues, Councilman Squilla and Councilman Bass, and our resolution just honoring the memory of um, former Councilman Jimmy Tyoon, who always made it his mission and also made it his business to let me know that regardless of what I do all throughout the city of Philadelphia, only the work that I do within the second councilmatic district is what matters because at the end of the day, those are the people who put you in office and he talked about the importance that constituent services is the bread and butter of why we do this work. But he also was the councilman during the time that Martin Luther King came down to South Philadelphia to the housing projects at 13th and Catherine Street. And so my grandma would always talk about the great work that he did when he served as a councilman. And so just wanted to offer brief statements in, in honor uh, of his life. Um, I want to also, um, I'm proud to say that we recently have um, the, go, the go ahead and green light for building a casino in the second councilmatic district at, La, at 11th and Packer, which will be live um, casino. And so as we move forward through that process, we look forward um, to providing um, jobs and professional service contracts and working with the building trades to make sure that um, people throughout the second councilmatic district have an opportunity to participate um, in the work that's going to be available uh, with this new hotel and casino that's going to be built in the second councilmatic district. And last but not least, today we made a very historical move by transferring the power from the School Reform Commission, uh, which was basically overseen by the state and me being a former legislator working in Harrisburg under Governor um, Tom Corbett and Governor Rendell recognized the significance of the responsibility that we're taking on. And that responsibility will give us an opportunity to have direct oversight over the operations of how the Philadelphia School District operates. Um, most may or may not know, I'm a public school graduate from Edward Bach High School. Um, I'm a graduate of the University of Mansfield, where I got a degree in criminal justice with two, two minors in philosophy and sociology. Then I came home and went to University of Pennsylvania and got a master's degree in government administration and public finance and did some coursework and got a certificate from Harvard Business School in nonprofit leadership and board management. And I say all that to say, I recognize the critical importance of us getting this right um, moving forward because being a new dad, I clearly recognize that um, you don't get a second chance in um, really helping your children get on a straight path when it comes to getting a quality education. And the Honorable Malcolm X once said that education is our passport to the future. And so I look forward to the robust, robust debate, um, conversation, strategic plan, and making sure that uh, we put all of our um, resources and efforts, most importantly the efforts, in raising the bar of quality education for our young people and working together to make sure we get it right moving forward. Because at the end of the day, I mean, I'm all due respect, I don't know where people send their children to school and we all have our choice, whether it's public or private or, or parochial schools, but we're dealing with lives. And some of these young people that live in some of these zip codes, if we want to improve the quality of their education, just to be quite frank, they may not have a shot. So I look forward um, for us getting this right with a strategic plan to move forward with the city of Philadelphia overseeing on the Philadelphia School District. And thank you, Council President, for your leadership in making sure the negotiations with the administration was on par with how we would like to move forward with the nominating process, making sure that's balanced, that's fair, when these nominations come through city council for approval. Thank you very much. Thank you, Councilman. Thank you for your continued great work. Um, Chair recognizes Councilwoman Blackwell. Thank you, Mr. President. I wanted to thank my colleagues, Councilwoman Bass, who is working so hard on Stop and Goes. We remember the Purple Fox back in the days at 49th and Baltimore when we named the whole issue Stop and Goes, and thank her for doing an outstanding job. And certainly, uh, 
what Councilman Jones said about Councilman Marie, Maria Canone Sanchez. She fights hard for her people, and we've commended her before. And I wanted to uh, let him know that in his very office was where uh, Jim Tyone's office was. And I didn't know if he remembered that. And, uh, and, uh, and I want to certainly add my voice to those because Lucian Blackwell was here and we were across the hall then and next door to him when uh, Tyune was council person and to his family and certainly to all those who mourn. He did a good job for us and he ran a great newspaper for us. And we do want to add uh, extra condolences to all uh, concerned. Thanks. Thank you, Councilwoman. Chair, recognize Councilman O. Thank you very much, Council President. Uh, I, I just wanted to say a couple things. W one is that I too wanted to just mention uh, Jimmy Tyune, graduate of the political school of Hard Knocks. Um, he, however, was so generous with his advice. And uh, I remember when he first gave me advice, I, I really was very suspicious about his advice. He told me when he ran, he used to take a camel with him. He was Jimmy Tyune, the Arab with the camel. And I was uh, new to politics, and I thought it was the like, craziest thing I ever heard. And uh, later, I began to appreciate kind of what he was telling me and things like that. And that was Jimmy Tyune. He was uh, very real, told it to you very directly, um, and just uh, it was very plain. And he was very kind and generous, and so I appreciated that. What I also wanted to say is that I'm, I'm, I'm a councilman at large, so I, I cover the whole city, and uh, I've had the opportunity to go into every neighborhood of Philadelphia. And the work that our district council people do in detail in that one-tenth of the city um, is uh, tremendous. Um, and uh, I just wanted to say, because I think many people don't appreciate that uh, council members are working evenings, mornings, weekends, and holidays. And in particular, um, I was with Councilwoman uh, Maria Quinone and Sanchez uh, a couple Saturdays ago uh, with her and her staff sweeping and cleaning up under the L. And for anyone who wants to come out um, this uh, Saturday at 10 a.m. at Kensington, Kensington and Tioga, you can also get a broom and pick up trash. Before that, she invited me out to where um, she was involved in a rehabilitation of entire block right near there. And there's been so many other invitations. She had an event where uh, there was a huge rally about fighting drug addiction. Um, she has been uh, just a uh, very generous with the idea that anyone who help, wants to help her district, you're welcome to help. Um, and I say that because uh, I have heard, you know, sometimes people say, well, you know, um, uh, the district council people need to be more real about things. I, I will say this, there's nobody more real uh, than our district council people who are on top of every type of issue in the city of Philadelphia, from business, to nuisance issues, to crime, to health, to schools. There are so many issues, potholes, jobs, uh, all guns, all types of things. Um, and uh, while it's always good to say that we should do more, raccoons, I'm sorry, bees, right? We did bees, um, environment, you know, so many issues uh, that occur. I also want to let people know that your city council people uh, are really working very hard. And council president, I've been to your di a, a district as a guest, Strawberry Mansion Day, and so many other things that you do uh, that you have invited me to. And um, you know, there has never been a distinction based on party or anything. It's just how can we work together to make our city better. And so I do appreciate that and just wanted to know, let people know um, that you can be assured that city council members are really working. You may not agree with us all the time. We don't agree with each other all the time. But certainly uh, I have not seen anyone who is slack in this council body. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman. We love you too. Um, <laughs> 
<laughs> that concludes today's speeches. <laughs> and the chair recognizes Councilwoman Reynolds Brown for a motion to adjourn. <laughs> uh, Two points before I adjourn, Mr. President. The chair of the Education Committee has asked that we remind my colleagues that there will be a one o'clock hearing of the Council Education Committee where we be, where, and we will be addressing the issue of suspensions immediately following session. And I too want to go on the record to commend the mayor for outlining the four pillars of the uh, education agenda for us for this uh, coming year and remind us, well, he got into the weeds this morning, which was um, uh, refreshing because when we dig down in the weeds, there's a lot of work in front of us that we're for sure willing to embrace. The deepest of which is that the district is going to face a deficit which begins next year and will grow to million to nearly $1 billion over the next five years. So the collaboration that he spoke about uh, will indeed be required and essential if we're going to achieve the goal of getting young people ready irrespective of their zip codes. And then with regards to Jimmy Tyune, uh, my memory of him is that he always fought for the underdog. He always looked out for those of us who had been counted out. And I will always uh, be thankful to him for that generous advice that he offered. With that said, Mr. President, I move that council stand adjourned until Thursday, November 16, 2017 at 10 a.m. Thank you. It's moved and properly second that council stand adjourned until Thursday, November 16, 2017, 10 a.m. All those in favor say aye. aye. Those opposed, ayes have it. Thank you all very much.